All right, Phil, taking a quick video of um, the plane here. We've got uh, the model, okay? Just gonna open up the canopy real quick. Okay, you'll see in here, the board is in, screwed in. Um, three valves in here. So one, two, three, they're all labeled. Uh, door, gear, and brakes. You see them in there? Your UAT, it's all hooked up. Um, this valve, this, excuse me, this pipe, this pipe goes underneath the board and right underneath here, right underneath this valve is your pump. Okay, so you just gotta add in here a uh, receiver, battery, sequencer, and whatever you prefer, your preferences, and you're good to go. Now, I, uh, I taped the steering mechanism, okay? So you kind of see it right here. Tape it nicely neat to this. All you gotta do is add your servo right underneath here. Put a uh, your horn and you can just kind of, I left the ball links on there for you. So you don't have to even go get the hardware. Okay, I think they're 256. You just kind of screw them onto your, uh, your new horn and uh, you should be good to go. All the length is done and uh, it's all good. Air tanks are under here. Like I mentioned, they're in the nose. They uh, got plenty of flags with them up there. They're pretty good. Sometimes they creep down, but you just you pull them up. They're good to go. You know, you can maybe put some new Velcro or whatnot, but they're, they're fine. Uh, I put my batteries here for CG purposes. These are my receiver batteries. You're gonna notice right underneath this board, there's a little uh, lead brick. I need that for CG, believe it or not. And I didn't want to put just bigger batteries for the sake of bigger batteries. This board comes out, there's four screws, two on this side and two on this side. Okay, so nice and neat, that board comes out. This board comes out, two screws, this screw here, this screw here, and then it's a pull and then out. In the back, on either side, there's two little slots that I made that the board kind of slides into and you screw it down. Okay, so that's, that's the nose here. Um, again, underneath here is your retract. Retract, it's still all connected. I would suggest you take all three retracts out and just kind of go over them. Um, I will uh, pack the uh, the three wheels and uh, shafts separately. Let me just put the uh, canopy back on. Okay, I just took the hatch off. I'm um, just gonna do a walk through here, okay? So, so you got a, uh, a ball valve here and a mount, you got a filter right here. You've got two uh, air pressure gauges and the receptacles to kind of fill them. This is your fill valve. I use these, I have my uh, New Jersey model to fill with, these, with a tap for this. So I just kind of screw, take the cap off, screw my fueler and I'm good to go. Uh, this spot right back here, I use a 3000 milliamp square um, light heat pack. This is where I use my uh, it's where I put my ECU battery. So I would suggest you take a look. There's some Velcro down there. It literally drops right in. It's a Spectrum battery. I can send you the part number if you want to use the same one. So this is tank two, tank three, on this side. All nice and neat. No leaks. This, this thing, you know, everything, everything's safety wired. I think when you get this plane, you'll be very happy. There's your K140. K140, brand new. You're going to love it. Um, it's got some flights on it, but not one issue with that. Not one issue. Pipe, beautiful condition, all good to go, all nice and clean. Okay, just wanna kinda of do a quick walk around here. I wanna show you, um, you know, receivers in there, excuse me, your, your servo. Okay, on this side too, servos are in there. All nice turnbuckles. Okay, your pipes, or your bifurcated pipe, all good to go. Okay, everything's secured. Let me just flip the plane upside. Let me put the hatch. Let me show you the hatch. And then I'll flip the plane over. Show you the underneath. Hold on. Oh, wait. Before I put the hatch on, let me show you the hatch. So, completely independent system. It's got its own air tech, its own uh, fill valve, and your, and your, your own uh, electronic valve. So, three plus one makes four. That's four valves. That's what you paid for. This... Uh, cylinder activates this um, speed brake perfectly. All you have to do is connect this guy right here to 
this guy right here, which is layable, it's speed brake. And obviously, you know, pump it with some air and, and you're, you're good to go. Um, underneath this one is your GSU. So if, I don't really use it anymore, but initially, just to get used to it when you're starting your motor, plug your GSU there and you're good to go. I set this plane up so I don't have to take this off when I'm flying. Okay, the canopy stays on. You know, I put my batteries in, good to go. Um, this is what I take off between flights, the hatch. Hatch comes off. You know, I fill the air in here for the plane, doors and brakes and gear. I fill the air in here for the uh, speed brake, fuel up, and my switch was here. I took my switch out because it was part of the Gemini, which I kept. We all kind of agreed on that. So, but it's nice and clean. You can't tell that it was ever there. Um, this is a, uh, a magnetic sensor used to be there for when I used to have the power box Royal. I'm, I'm not sure if you saw that listing. Uh, Maybe last year when I had even much more equipment in this plane. But um, it's just the remnants from that. No big deal. Okay, so that's the bottom of the hatch. Fully functional. Very cool. Let me put it down for a second. And let me, uh, so hatch back on. Let me flip the plane over for you. Okay, so now we got a view from underneath. You'll see, oh, very clean. You got two of these guys. These are the uh, DreamWorks High Flow. I have them on my overflow tank. So these are pretty expensive, so that's yours too. Um, so you got one side, you got the other side. Your doors, your retracts are inside. These two covers, you gotta take them off. And on each side, your elevator kind of inserts. And right here on each side, there's two little pinch bolts. There's a clamp in there. Easy stuff. Okay, in order to put your servos for this, which I removed, which we agreed to, uh, easiest way is take these turkey feathers off, take your pipe out, and work from the back. They go right here. They screw in this way and that way. That way. And I can always walk you through it when we're uh, over the phone when you get the plane. Okay, so that's just a quick view of the bottom. Okay. Let me just flip that around real quick. Okay, so that's that. Now let me come over here. So we got right wing, okay? So flap servo, it's in there. Aileron servo, it's in there. Uh, titanium turnbuckles, like I mentioned, all ball links, zero slot. Nice, nice setup. Um, this is the, uh, the left wing, same scenario. I'm going to show you full view, show you the uh, the top side, the damage, getting a perfectly good airplane. Okay, let me show you the other side on this guy. Okay, all nice and beautiful. Okay, um, let me walk over here. This is, um, let me kind of unzip this real quick. So I put a lot of time into this. Um, so I hope you enjoy it when you apply it with it. But uh, you got two of these. Okay. So it's the pylon, the two missiles, and the drop tank. Okay. You got two sets. One for each wing. They go right here. Boom, and boom, boom, and boom. Okay, should be nice. Um, and they're labeled. Okay, left pylon, same thing for the other one. Let me just wrap this one up real quick and I'll unwrap the other one so you can see them both. Okay, um, this is the right pylon, labeled, you can see, all painted nice, no damage or anything. 
and scrapes. A lot of guys get literally rip, rip these off of uh, the plane on landings and they damage the wing or they damage the pylons or both. Let me just wrap this one up. Hold on. Okay, sorry about that. So we got those two. This is the uh, belly tank, okay? So um, one screw and a peg back here, okay? So one screw and a peg. Here's your pylon. I never installed this one in the plane, but uh, I mean, I did install it. It's ready to go. You just have to add um, that screw right there. I never flew it with this guy, but I do have the provisions for it. Let me just show you on the underneath the plane. Right there, one and two. Okay, that's how you screw it on. And it's I've got blind nuts, high salt in there, so you're good to go. Now, this guy, something Mike gave me off his personal airplane. It's got a tank inside. You know, that's the hole. I mean, you open it up. There's a little fiberglass tank in there. I think he was using it for smoke. So it's got a Global Jet Club sticker on there. So it's yours. You can have it. This is two sets of uh, conformal tanks. They actually are functional. These are the little tanks that come in, that you can put inside. What that does, it converts this plane from an E, Strike Eagle E, which is, you know, it has nothing here. I'm sure you know the F-15s, but uh, it just adds like a tank here. It's called a conformal tank. And inside, it's a whole kit. I never installed it, it's brand new. So I'm not gonna open it, this original packaging. Uh, I have all the, the packaging, like I mentioned, so I'm gonna like use that for like the rudders and the vertical stabs. I'll you know use the nose. I did buy bubble for you know I'm gonna wrap the, the fuselage, um, get that all nice and safe. I've already test fit it. This is your crate. Okay, I'll show you and I'll take pictures where the plane is going in, how it's wrapped and stuff like that. But it's gonna be secured. So just put foam down here. It's gonna be secured in one, two. Three locations. This is just on there because I glued the foam. This, uh, these are just on here as weights. I glued the foam down to the wood and it's just securing. But that is uh, some Velcro for the nose. This is the front. So the plane fits perfect. I still have this cover loose. Um, plan was to take this video. Now what I'll do is I'll wrap the plane up. Once it's wrapped, it'll go into its container. Once it's in there, I'm going to use that wood to uh, to make the covers, the sides, the two sides, the four sides, and once that's done, I'll uh, secure the top, and then it'll be ready for pickup. Uh, my trailer, I don't know if you see it up there, it's actually outside in the rain, because I'm doing this for you, which I never, I never, I always keep my trailer indoors when it rains, but uh, just trying to take care of you. So I'll keep this video. I think we're at like 13 minutes. I'll, I'll shut it here. This is the box, so you can just imagine. You know, this is the box that came in. You know, little tiny. I think it will probably fit inside. You see? That's how small it is. It would never, never really work unless we took the whole plane apart in pieces. You know, I could probably fit it inside the crate. But I sent you the dimensions. I haven't heard back from you. But uh, I should be done with this kind of plane in this crate with the sides on by tonight and then I'll, I'll try to store it somewhere over here in the garage so I want to get my trailer back in here but uh, if if possible when you well, t speak to the uh, the carriers try and see if they can do pickup because uh, this crates bigger than I think I can fit my trailer so if they can do pickup that would be cool that would be great if not um, I don't know I don't know maybe rent something but that's just more cost to things and I'm putting a lot of time I spent you know already like eight hours building this thing so um all right man I'm gonna end it here and, and I'll try to send this to you and uh and I'll keep working on it I should be done by tonight and uh, let me know what the plan is regarding shipping take care